I don't think I've ever been more nervous to film a video in my life. Hey guys, welcome back. I've had this idea in my notes for months and I have kept putting it off. And to tell you the truth, I feel like I still kind of want to put it off, but I know that right now is the perfect time to film it and I know that it's the best time. So that's why I'm bringing this to you now. Welcome to Daddy Issues with your host, me, Alyssa Ray. When you're watching this, it's going to be June 17th, which is Father's Day. The sad thing is that I had to look up that date. I had no idea when Father's Day was until I asked Google. But there's a lot more sad things to talk about, so <laughs> let's move on. So if you pay close attention to my videos, I sometimes talk about my personal life. I've mentioned my dad a few times in my videos, and each time, um, it's... A little aggressive and my dad was literally like a piece of shit. so um was that too real I'm sorry I kind of feel like he was sort of you know a father to my two older sisters he got a dose of fatherhood and what it was like and then when I came along he was kind of just like oops sorry I don't want to be a dad anymore yes he was a bad father to me he was absent through most of my life but I don't mean to trash talk him because I don't know what he was going through. I don't know what kind of demons he had when he decided to have me with my mom. But I do know that for 20 years I have been hurt and have had this anger and bitterness in my heart towards him. I grew up feeling like I was never enough because, well, there's a lot of reasons, but <laughs> that fucking sucks. And if you have gone through that, then you know that it sucks too. The entire reason behind me even wanting to do this video was because, well, first I wanted to get my feelings and my story out in the open and off my chest because I know that I tend to suppress those feelings. I I keep them way deep, deep down. I don't like to share them because it's always been something I've been extremely insecure about so I choose to not talk about it but I want to talk about it today because if my experience can help just one person if someone can take at least one thing from this video I'll feel like I've done my job because I got to use my pain and my experience to help better someone else's. So I'm just going to start from the beginning. Okay, so first let's talk about my mom and dad. They went to the same high school together and started dating when my mom was a junior. It was the classic story of two teens falling in love and marrying their high school sweethearts. Whatever. <laughs> they got married at age 22 and soon after that had my sister Kristen. And then they had Jasmine and then they had me. I always feel like I was the child my father cared the least about. I look back at old photo albums and I see so many pictures of my sisters as babies. I only have one picture of me as a baby. This is really the only photo of me as an infant and I wish I was exaggerating. I look back at old home videos my parents made and there's tapes of my sisters from when they were babies to when they were like toddlers, kind of growing up a little bit, but there's no footage of me as a baby. Like none. There's one footage from like my first birthday party, but like they weren't even focused on me, first of all. Like who shot that, first of all? I was told that when I was born, my dad sold the camera. So I don't know what that says, but that definitely is a stab to the heart right there. Do I not matter to take pictures of me as a baby? Yikes. <laughs> That hurts. <laughs> so fast forward when I was a little bit older, I noticed that my dad put a lot of stress on my mom. There was a point in time where he got laid off of work, so she had to um, work two jobs to support our family. My mother was the only parent that was ever really affectionate with me or shared sentimental moments. So naturally, I noticed when she was happy and when she was unhappy. There was a moment that we shared when I was about seven years old and I'll never forget it because it it was really like just a lot for me to take in. I remember she was sitting outside of our house um, on the curb and I go up to her to ask her like what she's doing and then I see like all these tears coming down her face so I ask her what's wrong. She obviously tries to put on a brave face and she's like oh nothing, nothing but I don't think that that was when they had started fighting. I think that they had issues long before I was born but 
that is when I noticed that there was something going on because to be honest I never saw them really fighting when I was younger but I guess I just kind of put like two and two together and I just thought because they were still together that everything was fine I mean I knew our life wasn't perfect because I shared one bed with my two sisters so I knew we didn't have everything I knew you know like times were tough but like I thought we had a good family like I was really in the dark for most of their fights and arguments and stuff which I guess is is a good thing but I had no idea what was going on a year later when I was about eight years old my mom got separated from my dad she was the one that called it off and shortly after my sisters and I packed our bags and we moved without him I remember being very confused because no one sat me down and explained like hey me and your father are having issues and I think that's like one thing that is like not a very good thing to do to your child. I think like no matter the age, I think my mom should have told me like, hey, this is happening, <laughs> you know, because um, I was just really confused through it all. I remember feeling like I wasn't normal for a long time. I felt like I wasn't normal because I didn't have both my parents raising me and that was no fault of my own. I just always felt that like neglect from my father, like he never, he never gave me like any attention or anything. So I just felt like it was my fault. My sisters and I would eventually begin seeing him for like one day out of the week for 30 minutes at a time. He would call sometimes but that was it. The thing about my dad is that he really didn't have anything going for him besides my mom. I asked her what they used to talk about when they were married, like what were his goals, his aspirations, like what did, what did he dream of? And she said nothing. She said he was happy with where he was at in life and that was nowhere. So this is where it gets um, messed up. So he would call my mom to uh try to come set up like little visits with us when they were like on really good terms he would come over to our house rather than my mom dropping us off at his house so he would ask my mom to come over and he would say hi to us and probably like spend five minutes with us but other than that he would spend the rest of the time talking to my mom in the kitchen so my sisters and i think that he basically used us to like try to get to my mom so like going back on the he had nothing going for him but my mom and my mom thinks it too that like he kind of used us to try and like sneak his way back into her life because he always just wanted to get back with her and she like once she left him like that was it for her she didn't want anything to do with him but that was obviously something that was mutual between them was their fucking kids no shit. So being used, yeah, that was great. Another thing about my dad was that when he would talk to my mom about having kids one day, he said that he wanted all boys, but he got three girls. So that must have been quite the shocker. Now that I'm older and I'm analyzing everything, I just feel like that was a big thing for him. I feel like that was why he was disinterested in us and he didn't take the time to get to know us. Well, to get to know me. I feel like if he had a son, he might have been more attentive or more interested, more caring. I mean, he is who he is and, and you can't change that, but I feel like he would have had more things in common with a son. This isn't really my story to tell, but I thought it would give you a little bit of insight. So my sister was telling me that she went to the store with my dad my middle sister Jasmine and me and I guess they were checking out and a lady was talking to my dad about like she was pointing out how many kids he had or whatever he replied with oh well we were just trying for boys but he didn't like laugh it off he kind of just like said it he was just like stating facts type of thing it's just like little things like that that really make me question everything I guess I don't know so when I was about 14 years old my sister announced that she was getting married and she didn't even want my dad to walk her down the aisle but she really invited him as a courtesy to the wedding because she felt like she owed it to him which she regrets now but that's what happened so later that night um at the reception i performed a song for my brother-in-law and my sister and afterwards my family came up to me and they were like oh we're so proud of you and you did so good and then my dad comes up to me and he was like wow let's say you did so good and for the first time i felt like i was being noticed and i was actually like really excited and happy that like he was talking to me about 
how proud I was because this is coming from a man who didn't really attend my award ceremonies he never attended any of like my volleyball games or like my performances nothing like that and this is important to know I was in show choir like all through elementary school I was in dance for like the last couple years of my elementary I was in ballet he took me to ballet classes sometimes when my mom couldn't take me so like okay so Anyways, the next thing he said was like literally a record scratch. He was like, I didn't even know you like to sing. My mom and dad gave me a karaoke machine when I was like six years old. I use that thing every day. It probably got so annoying. I love to sing. I've been singing since like I could speak. That kind of just shows how absent he was because I mean really and I wish that I could have just walked away or you know pointed out like do you not know anything about me but instead I was like yeah I like to sing and I just, I just walked away I let it be and I didn't say anything and that's when I realized the reality of it all it's like everything up until that moment was foggy and I could barely see the things that were going on but when he said that I was like oh okay you were there when I was a child you just weren't there for me okay got it noted once my sister had gotten married she basically cut him out of her life for good she hasn't talked to him ever since from that point on it was just my sister jasmine and i that would go visit him except it was like i wasn't even there it was like i was watching from the sidelines because i don't know what it was but my dad was like really interested in my sister jasmine like i'm not trying to shade her or anything obviously like she's a great person but he was just so interested in my sister. It was like I didn't even exist. Like he, like I'm telling you, I'm not exaggerating. He did not know me. And he didn't even care to know me is the thing too. I kept waiting for him to ask more personal questions about me. Not just like, how were your grades? How's your mom? La, la, la. Like, fuck you. <laughs> I guess that kind of messed me up too. I knew I was a really good daughter to my mom, but he never let me be a good daughter to him. Just being ignored like that kind of, it really messes with your head. The final thing that I wanted to mention because I feel like there's a lot of like different aspects that like kind of like me out mentally, <laughs> but the last thing that I wanted to share with you, much like my sister when she invited him as a courtesy to her wedding, I did the same with my graduation because at that point we were talking but we weren't well we were never really on good terms but he would just like when he would call me and I don't know if it's the same for my sister but like this would break my heart every single time because I was still like genuinely happy to get a phone call from him because like I wanted a father so bad that like I would take that pain every single time and our phone calls would last a minute two minutes tops it would be the basics how are you doing in school are you okay how's your mom how's your sister you know just bullshit. just small talk and then like okay well i miss you you know you can call me blah blah and that was it and there was nothing more to our relationship but that i held on to that for so long because i wanted that like i really wanted that and I, I don't know, I just, I guess I didn't realize that I could let go, that I had that ability to let a parent go. I felt like I need to be this daughter that is always there for them, but he was never there for me. So it's like, why? I was, I was basically torturing myself. Shout out to Graveyard Girl for this hack, because... You're a queen. <laughs> so going back to my graduation, he ended up sitting next to my family, to my mom and my sister and my oldest sister as well and her family because there was limited amount of seats and everyone just ended up sitting together. And my middle sister, Jasmine, had actually taken him to the graduation that night because he didn't have a car. So it was really awkward because at that point, my oldest sister wasn't talking to him. And my mom, like, she really didn't want anything to do with him either she was like polite and she said hello but other than that that was like it for them so after the ceremony finished i came out and i was saying hi to like all my friends and taking pictures and you know greeting old family members that i had invited and then my dad comes up to me and he gives me a hug he's like oh congratulations like some bullshit. like 
really quickly then like I continue talking to other family members and you know doing what you do at graduations so I was kind of like everywhere and then like five minutes later my sister comes up to me and she's like oh I'm gonna take dad home he wants to go home so I'm like okay all quick but whatever like I could care less so later on she tells me what happens in the car and she asks him like why are you leaving so soon and he was like oh because nobody wants me there I don't feel welcome nobody's talking to me and it's like okay first of all I invited you I am not talking to you at the moment because you are not the most an important person in my life you don't deserve to have all my attention that night and because I am so busy talking to other family members taking pictures making memories I don't have time to be just trying to play catch up with you like I don't give a it kind of just goes to show what kind of person he is very like self-centered and narcissistic like he just wanted the attention on him when it wasn't even his night it was my night another thing about that was like when he greeted me my boyfriend Endry was like either right next to me or like somewhere very nearby and I could have easily taken him aside and said hey this is my boyfriend but I didn't do it because it was embarrassing to introduce my boyfriend the one man who has ever showed me what real love is to my father who is supposed to be the first man that shows me what real love is so after my graduation I cut him off as well and I haven't talked to him and it's been like three years since I've spoken to him. So here's the part that fucked me up. <laughs> a few weeks ago, I told my mom that I wanted to film this video and she told me that a few days before that, my dad had actually reached out to her and asked her for mine and my sister's numbers. I don't know what the reason is. I, I mean, I can imagine he would say, oh, it's to like reconnect. I haven't spoken to them in forever or whatever. You know, he might even be using us to like get back with my mom for some reason, even though he doesn't even have a chance. But whatever the case is, I thought so hard about this. I wasn't going to do it. And then I was going to do it because I wanted to tell him how much he hurt me. And my mind was set on it. I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be brave and I'm finally going to speak out and you know, tell him how I feel. And then the day came and I realized that I couldn't do it because I can't see an outcome where I'm ever truly happy. I feel like it would be such a huge step back for me to call him and to let him know how I feel. And then he would try to convince me or manipulate me into letting him be in my life. And I just can't do that. It would be a huge step back for me because I've gone my entire life struggling through the fact that I don't, that there's this void in my heart. It's not just like, oh, I don't have a dad. Like it's deeper than that. It's given me a lot of problems with the way that I trust and the way that I love my entire life. I've been preparing myself to live this life, to live without a father. And I know for a fact that I'm 1000% better without someone that toxic in my life. Every struggle, every pain, every heartbreak, every time I cried myself to sleep. I know that that shaped me who I am right now, who's talking to you, has been made into such an amazing person because, because I learned to be creative and to express myself in ways that I don't think I would have if I had a father, if I had a normal life, if I had, didn't have all these f***ing issues. I would just be boring. I wouldn't be myself and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do what I love to do the most. So this is what I've decided to do. I used to write letters to my father explaining how he made me feel and just how much he hurt me and how much I didn't like the things that he did. And every time I would go to visit him, I would put the note in my pocket. And by the end of it, I would either have ripped up the paper or thrown it away. I never gave my dad those notes because I was too afraid to confront him and tell him how I felt. So he never knew what I had to say. And I really tried, I really tried for entertainment purposes to build up the courage to speak to him over the phone and confront him over the phone. Because first of all, clickbait goals, <laughs> but I would be lying to you if I said that I was ready to do that. I don't think I could ever put myself in a, in a situation where he would be able to hurt me again. So what I'm going to do is I'm finally going to write that letter and I'm going to give it to my mom so that she can give it to him um, so he can't get in contact with me. I don't want to receive a letter back. I just want my sh 
out in the open and I want him to know what I have to say finally and then I feel like I'll finally get some type of closure. This story will never have an open ending because once I let him know how I feel, it'll finally be over. <laughs>